This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to show 117 of the Aussie Mac Zone. Uh, we've got a, it's been, been a good story. A, a, a good week for stories. Uh, Garth, how are you getting on tonight, my friend? Very nice, sir. Very nice indeed. How are you? Good. Good. So we've got story number one. Teens are more in love with iPhones than ever, survey says. So CNET reports the Piper Jaffrey survey shows that 67% of teens owned an iPhone up from 66% six months ago. It also declared that 74% of teens intend their next phone to be an iPhone. That's a 2% rise from March. So you can decide whether these numbers show just how a talented Apple is at marking to the young, or you can choose to believe that other phone brands have failed in utterly inspiring the young to wrap their feelings around a new brand. Uh, and I'll lean towards the latter. Uh, I fancy some Apple marvel and how rivals simply haven't penetrated young skills enough. Um, they serve around 9,500 people, average age 16, and of those, 2,700 were from upper income. That's a household okay. income yep. of 107,000 US. And the remainder from a group whose average household income was 52. And uh, they did classroom visits and, and electronic surveys. So, what do you, what do you reckon? I reckon I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you, but aside from that, <laughs> aside from that, I'm just trying to fix that now. Sorry. Yeah, so I'll that's just right. edit that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, look, speaking from, I don't know, my own son was stuck on a Windows mobile phone because he, he briefly had an iPhone, dropped it and got stuck with a Windows mobile and uh, <laughs> wasn't too amused about it. <laughs> He's still talking to you, that's one thing. But I think there is, you know, there's still a fair bit of... Yeah, well, that's right. Well, the, the Windows mobile phone got smashed as well, so I'm glad it wasn't the first... My uh, iPhone wasn't replaced with another one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think... The kids, you know, they, they love to do all of the, you know, Instagrams and Snapchats and all that sort of stuff. And having some kind of smartphone is it's getting more and more desirable. And um, still, obviously, uh, the iPhone in line with the general population is, uh, is the one they really do want if they had the choice. So, well, at least the majority by the sounds of it. Do so you think it's just... If they can afford it, basically it works, and, and it's as simple as that. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. You know. I don't. I don't know how much. How you know with with, you know his group of friends, um, how much they care, really, like oh yeah that looks good cool, or if it's not. I still think for him, you know, it's probably not that important as long as it, as long as it's, you know, as long as it does a few things they want it to do. Um, I'm not actually sure how much they want it to be necessarily an iPhone, but if it is, then cool, that I can do that. I know how to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? Well, um, I still have people ask me some questions about. How do I make my Samsung talk to my Windows machine, or how do I make my Samsung talk to my Mac if I want to back it up, and just little things like that 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 are never quite as straightforward. I don't think um, on on the Samsung side. Mm. I don't get many people ask me about other phones other than Samsung. To be honest, um, it's all, it's all iPhone because I'm an Apple yeah, guy, but okay. the only other then it's Samsung or nothing it's else really. Sad. Oh, Michael, we've got this huge delay going again. I think. Uh, you've. 
you're looking all right, sounding all right. Like as soon as you're talking, I'm getting it. <laughs> I don't. No, you're not. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the counting? I can edit this bit out. Yeah. I think just it's, um... count. Yeah, it's like a one. Yeah, try to try that again for me. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll plow on, shall we? Plow on for a bit. So we've got story number two. New IMAX this week. So we got... Uh, a 20 like it's the bottom line is a 21 21 and a half inch non-retina which is the 1.6 gig dual core i5 with the intel hd graphics 6000 1920 by 1080 srgb display that's 1699 australian i don't think that price changed i'm not quite sure but um mm. And then we've got... I must have... Yeah? <laughs> no, you go, yeah, see, this is going <laughs> to... I was going to say, I must admit, I didn't look at any of the pricing for the Australian stuff it, on, on these. I was I was preemptively scared, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can relate to that with the changes. And then we've got 3.1 gig quad-core 21.5, which is the Intel Core i5 um that's got the intel graphics 6200 but it's got the retina 4k 4096 by 2304 p3 display and that mm -hmm. one is 2299 and then we've got the 27 inch 5k retina display uh this is the top of the line so it's 3.3 gig quad core i5 it does a turbo boost up to 3.9 gig uh, it's got a two terabyte fusion drive uh, and it's got the amd radeon r9 m395 and it's got massive two gig video memory and it's got the retina 5k at 5120 by 2880 p3 display so that was um and how much is that one? That's three five nine nine. But that's the top oh, of the line. That's yeah. the top of the line off the shelf one. Yeah. Yeah, you can put thirty two gigs of RAM um, if you want to. A bigger hard drive if you want to. But one interesting thing is, you can no longer use the extra use them as an external display in target display mode. So you can't connect your macbook pro to them anymore and use it as another display i thought that was a bit unusual yeah i, I think it's you weren't able to with the last year's model either were you i don't think uh, or could you yeah uh -oh. yeah even the 21 and a half you could i, I believe you could use it in target this just target display mode okay yeah so i um, thought that was a bit unusual they also yeah. came out with some new uh a new wireless keyboard a new wireless trackpad and a new wireless mouse so yes. they've all got lithium ion inbuilt batteries now uh, and i think that's all that's making some magic is it <laughs> i'm not sure where the magic <laughs> comes in with these fellas yeah uh <laughs> they've got a they've all got lightning ports in them so you just charge it using your usb to lightning adapter or cable i should say um it's just the one the mouse that i saw you got to sort of the cable goes in the side so i don't basically you got to charge it every night and or you know every couple of days and uh, yeah just it to be confident it sounds like it gets its charge pretty quick you don't have to leave it on very long for it to yeah you know i yeah. think it was a few minutes for, and you've got a whole day's worth of charge there yeah so it'll last a long time without a charge but um yeah not being able to use it while it's charging i guess yeah. you know i think it's going to be good excuse for coffee you think yeah <laughs> and, and that's all it would take to get it back up and running yeah. but it could you know it's one of those things it'd be nice if it was a little bit more sensibly placed 
but there are obviously the, um, some kind of constraint. Yeah, there must have been a reason, you'd think. Yeah. And, yeah. and I went to buy the trackpad separately because I, I personally use a trackpad uh, even when I'm in desktop mode uh, on one of the machines that, or the machine I regularly use. And I was looking forward to the Force Touch trackpad. And uh, I must have looked at it at the American price because I had my money ready and then went down and it was like 50 bucks dearer than I was expecting. So I have, I have to save up some more money. <laughs> How much was it? 199 Yeah, see, it. Oh, that's magic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I don't know. All of this new, all of this stuff, it, it all looks good, looks nice, but oh my goodness, the prices at the moment. Um, you'd have to really, really want it. The keyboard even looks looks pretty cool, you know, but it, it's just a Bluetooth keyboard, really, isn't it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got one so of those to test um, yeah. from one of my customers who bought a new, new machine the day after, and but they uh, wanted a cable keyboard so i did them a swap gave them a cable keyboard and i've got the the new wireless one to test out but I, okay as soon as they they announced the force touch trackpads in the um macbook pros back in june or whatever i thought oh that's gonna be an awesome trackpad externally i can't wait but now i've got to now i have to wait <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty big too isn't it, it it's it's um a, a good size at least yeah yeah it's probably um be a good i would have said yeah, good 40 mil wider than the current trackpad mm. and not quite as tall um so yeah it's just something for me yeah. to look forward to that's right. You get your little haptic engine there tapping you back. Yes. The um the feeling of those things is pretty cool. It's amazing how it you know how they feel like the click, even though there's no actual click happening. Yeah. It really uh. The really brain is amazing, brain. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's um one one nice little I guess close to magic, hardly magic at all. But anyway, <laughs> a nice little thing with them is the way that um if you plug them in with a lightning cable to charge. Well, the first time you use them, that's all you need to do to pair for the yeah. Bluetooth. Instead of going through the normal Bluetooth pairing, you plug it into the a Mac running El Capitan, and it will um, automatically pair that, that just happens keyboard yeah. or <laughs> mouse or any of those. Yeah, so that that's a nice little touch. Yeah. But um, yeah. So. But, um, We've also got... Uh, we better mention Glenn, I suppose. Yes, our awesome athwebhosting.com.au. Always, we know, the Australian servers, affordable and competitive plans, 24-7 ticket support system, friendly help when needed, uh, the cPanel, which is our industry standard, those 250 scripts, which is... Uh, many, many more, and you know, WordPress getting updated and Joomla instant activation, you can do it anytime 24 7. So, it's just a, a good local hosting company that we use and trust. And Absolutely. we'd like to thank them there for their support, Young Glenn. Absolutely. <laughs> All the hard work in the background there, yes. <laughs> so, we've been lucky Speaking enough to have work a in the background <laughs> yeah a, a young got an email from a, a listener had a his young bloke went overseas and was, was doing some work overseas and took his mobile phone with him as as you would you know yeah had his iphone 5 um was using it a lot it sounds like um in a venue and and wanted to make it a bit easier and quicker to access the, <laughs> the applications that he was using so he took the passcode off <laughs> And then left it on the table, maybe, it sounds like, or something along those lines. Anyway, the um, iPhone went missing. So he uh, he knew there was only a prepaid SIM, a local SIM he had in by the sounds of it. Prepaid yeah. SIM, not much data left on it or anything like that. Um, and, you know, as soon as, as soon as he had the opportunity, he, he uh, changed all his passwords and um, got the INI blocked when he got, uh, I guess, got back to Australia and spoke to Telstra or whoever it was he was with. 
um, got the army blocked. So all good. Gets his new iPhone and uh, lo and behold, on his iPhone appear all the pictures of, <laughs> of the thief who had taken his phone. Which, um, you know, so, <laughs> so <laughs> which I thought was really quite, really quite amusing, really, you know. Um, not losing of the phone, but having all the selfies of the thief <laughs> come up in his <laughs> iCloud photo stream. Yes. So he was able to post these pictures online and uh, they, they found who had taken the phone with the, one of the companies who was doing work in the venue. Yeah. But um, that aside, the question uh, Lindsay had was, you know, how did this happen? How did, how did all these photos show up? And we had the army blocked and we... Uh, there wasn't much data left on the sim. The sim was dead and so forth. And basically, by the sounds of it, you know, there's no passcode on the phone. So the you know, the guy who was able to access it was able to obviously get into the phone, take pictures, delete all photos that were on there. Um, and because it sounds like the phone was signed in to his iCloud account, obviously that replicated itself. Yeah, that's, that's the person that lost its iCloud account, not the thief's iCloud account. Yeah. Yeah, so it just so, whatever photo was in the photo stream, boom, up it went. That's right. And so the fact that the army was blocked wouldn't have really changed no, anything. That's, because that's Wi-Fi, yeah. That's, well, no, that's cellular. So all the thief needed to do was hook up to any kind of Wi-Fi, any kind of internet access, yeah, which he yeah. could have easily done. Um, the army would have blocked him from using it as a phone and using cellular data, but um, he could have easily gone in there and configured his own Wi-Fi network to at home when he got home or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Still signed into the the, own, the the rightful owner's iCloud account. Yeah. So all those photos would have been uploaded into the photo stream. <laughs> Pardon and me. Um, as I as I mentioned, an email back to him. He's now got a well, now got a very. Uh, very nice iPod Touch. <laughs> but as we believe that he that he's been um, found out, hopefully he's got nothing. <laughs> well, that could be it, yeah. Or but, sh shackles. <laughs> something, something other, yeah. Um, so, the, the email didn't make that aspect of it clear, but let's let's hope that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, so the point is, if you want to put the Oh, sorry, your passcode, you can have that so instead of being 30 seconds, it can be like 10 minutes. Don't just take it off altogether. That's the first trick. Yep. Um, for the sake of just a quick swipe and entering four digits. Um, and yeah, just blocking the, f the phone IME number doesn't do anything when it's connected to Wi Fi. No, that's right. And the other one we weren't sure about was if it was on Find My Phone, he could have wiped it anyway. Yes, and that and would have been, and that's the key. I want to sort of one of the reasons bringing up the story, just to reiterate, even if you know the passcode something you're not, like I said, you move it out to ten minutes, but make sure you've got Find My iPhone switched on, um, and activated because with the activation lock there. Uh, the thief or any anyone who takes the phone cannot disassociate it from your iCloud account and use it again. It, it cannot be used again. You can go remotely in your browser or from another iOS device and remotely wipe that phone and they'll be left with a, a rather attractive brick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, that's all they'll have. They The only way to get that phone to work again and do anything other than sit there and say, where's the password? is to put in the original owner's, well, the, the owner's iCloud details. Yes. Um, that phone is effectively a brick. And, um, you know, so make sure you've got Find My Own Phone, Find My iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you've got that thing turned on, Find yeah. My iPhone, and you obviously you've, you've got your passcode on there. Yeah. And great, great tip there, Michael, with... You know, even if you don't have it on for immediately having to access it, put it yeah. on for 10 minutes or something like that. You can change the length of time. Yeah. So that, yeah. And, yeah, because they'll, they'll get home, put it on their sideboard and charge it overnight and it'll be useless in the morning to them as well. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly um, right. 
and the other thing is if you own uh, any of the newer iPods that's got find my phone as such turned on uh, iPads please do it for those as well yep. that's in the same settings find my iPad and uh, we're getting it on our Macs now as well find, find my Mac yeah, find my Mac's there. I don't know if there's any yeah. kind of activation lock though on the Mac. I'm no, not, not sure. quite, but it's it's yeah. getting definitely getting closer. It's on our watches though. So yes. Since yeah. I was watch OS two, it's um the activation lock is there as well. Um, it just makes all these devices that less attractive to thieves as a target. If they, you know, it soon becomes known that yeah, really can't do much <laughs> with this. Yeah. And um, reduces the sort of desirability of having that sort of device stolen yeah because some some people have known just to knock off a phone so they can ring their friend overseas and once once they've made the phone call they use it till it goes uh runs out of credit or whatever and then they just don't care anymore they just leave it where they found it or you know drop it at mcdonald's or whatever and go away yeah <laughs> very no, annoying um, well yeah absolutely and expensive yeah um but, you know, I guess the you know, positive side is that they were able to catch him because of the situation. <laughs> and that's not um, the first time either. That's No, I that, bet it's that's, not. Uh, it's yeah. happened a lot. As, again, even with people taking uh, photo booth photos on stolen Macs and the whole thing, just because the photos go up to the iCloud account, there's yeah. that person they want. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you've got location services turned on on your Mac, so it tells you information from Wi-Fi, etc. Mm. So just as you say, just that little bit less attractive to, to the people involved. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we've got a story about Facebook draining all your iPhone battery. So I don't know whether you've had this yet. Um, I certainly haven't had it. No, uh, it hasn't. Been but I don't have Facebook turned on. <laughs> well, I, that's the thing. It sounds like they with. Facebook, you know, you can go in there and you can deactivate, deactivate up background updates. Yeah. But um, apparently that's not really working terribly well at the moment. <laughs> so one of the one of the features that you have generally with iOS apps is this background updating now. So the app yeah. can sit in the background every now and then, go out and check the new content, so that when you open Facebook, um, all the latest stuff is right there immediately for you. So it's a convenience type thing. Um, and a lot of apps will do this, and news apps, and all sorts of all sorts of apps will do this constantly, or occasionally in the background, check for updates. And you've got the option to turn that off if you want to, you know, yeah. watch your battery, and you know you don't really want it to be doing that. But it seems that the Facebook app has not been respecting that setting, and nonetheless going and and doing <laughs> stuff in the background even when it's told not to. It's amazing. Yeah. So. Before you get too angry, uh, Facebook says it is aware of the issue and is working on a fix. Mm. So um, hopefully they'll have that sorted for us very quickly. Absolutely. Now I, I hardly ever open the app either, but I do have it on there. I just <laughs> <laughs> I just occasionally get the emails that say you've got 32 updates that you haven't checked on. <laughs> 56 <laughs> updates. Please come and visit and see what's happened. So much has yeah. happened on Facebook since you went. <laughs> Oh, gosh, whatever. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Intel has 1,000 employees working on LTE modem chip for next generation iPhone. So, we've got Mac Rumors is reporting Intel has 1,000 of its employees working on preparing the, the new LTE modem for Apple's iPhone 7 devices. So, um, it just... It's really showing how important Apple's business is when they've got that many people trying to make a chip for something that uh, is, is a major design change for Apple as well, I would have thought. Yeah, so, uh, that's, um, that's extraordinary really if, if, if they're right with this, yeah. isn't it, really? Um, and it, it may be... I know we briefly mentioned last week a story about how um, I'm not sure if any of the listeners went and read that article, but um, the, you know there's rumours that Apple are working on those cellular chips as well themselves. So maybe Intel have gone, 
and maybe this is sort of what you know, there's there's some combination here. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, that's a lot of a lot of stuff. They can be designing it, and then uh, Apple can buy it and put it on their system on a chip A14 or whatever whatever they end up having in the next yeah. phone system. And the advantage is it works on many more um, LTE networks, so you don't have to have one chip for this particular country and another chip for this particular country, which all adds to the cost of supporting and building phones. So if mm. they can end up with just one phone or even not have a specific chip in there and just have it built onto their a14 chip or whatever that that's got to reduce the cost and make it better for all of us yeah so we've got to remember so, to promote our friends our aussie tech head podcast yeah uh which is yeah. good good discussions but we've also got the one where i've written everyone note i've written down the name this week so i don't have to look it up i'll make it up as i go along Aussie Tech Security Podcast. That's where you can oh. join Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads and our new gentleman, Roger Smith, each episode for an easy going chat about your online data security and privacy protections. And it's been pretty good so far. They've only got two episodes, but um, mm -hmm. very important information for people to at least stop and think about. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll just to point out to Michael, you got the name right anyway. <laughs> Previously, last week, we, we got there with the name last week. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Speaking of um, security, we've had another a little security fumble with the App Store, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> a few hundred, a hundred or so apps with a that um, have a third-party advertising component in it or what do we call it yeah um, yeah so when, when you're actually buying cheap games or free games that put the advertising in there um, that's not supposed to be but has been gathering some information about you I believe yeah I'm not sure how exactly what sort of information um, it was a Chinese term uni uni Mm -hmm. advertising firm it sounds like it's mostly just the normal sort of stuff that we get tracked on the web generally you know so that they can serve the right ads so they've got a they've got their advertising network and it was in at least 250 apps 250 of these free <laughs> slash cheap apps yep um that serve ads as their as their revenue model and like with a lot of online advertising we're, we're going to track from side to side so they know which ads to service and which um, ads we've seen enough times already and which ones they should show us. So I hope, I, I don't know that there was anything more malicious than that, as in making sure they could serve you with the right ads. Yeah. But um, either way, they're, they're accessing private APIs that shouldn't be accessing. And why on earth did uh, it take an outside security agency once again to find it when that <laughs> should have been prevented through the App Store process? Uh, obviously, we're not checking enough information or we're not getting to it fast enough or there must be something in the coding there that we can't check easily, Apple can't check easily. Presumably, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it was clearly obfuscated what they were doing. Apparently, it wasn't, you know, they had definitely tried to hide what they were doing. Um, but to call on, you'd think that, you know, any application running that was calling on a private API that have a tool that would automatically that would ring know, bells <laughs> that would ring bells immediately um, maybe it doesn't do that during a testing process and they can I don't know but yeah. um, anyway it's just it has been has been found and but once again not not an ideal situation for stuff going through the app store yeah maybe um, maybe it doesn't install until three weeks after you've installed it on your f your phone or something maybe that's how they they cheat and get away with it yeah i don't know but it um, might be the first upload you, you know the first upgrade you do to your your game that you bought this week is next week it's installing the software and not telling you yeah it, well who knows yeah who knows but um 
uh, we, you know, we, we hear about these things that get through occasionally, but um, we don't hear about all the ones that they stop at the source. So <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how big of a problem this is really, do you? You know, nah. um, is just this the one in the thousand that got through or is this, is this more common? Is there more th getting through than the one we're aware of as well and we're just we're haven't been caught yeah, yet? Yeah, 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 yeah don't, don't know. Just, just don't know. I don't no. think there's any, any, um, doubt though that it's still it's a much safer platform to be on but um it does sort of undermine the confidence a little bit i think in the whole restrict in the whole process yeah and i'm just wondering whether to be on the chinese side whether they're doing a better job serving ads than google do <laughs> <laughs> like you know the old i've already bought those shoes why do i need to see another ad for the shoes like <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a challenge. Not a, uh, not a question I want to try and find out the answer to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that because we turn off our cookies on our buying programs and not on our um, yeah maybe that's searching programs? Yeah. So it's all always our fault, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Maybe we should be telling broadcasting to Google what we've yeah. purchased as well. Yeah. Don't show me ads for this again. Yeah. Mr. Google, can I buy these jeans or can I buy these shoes? Yeah. Can you please stop selling me these shoes? Yeah. <laughs> I bought them out. So here's a photo, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've got, um, speaking of big companies, Adobe's been listening to its customers. So Adobe to undo Lightroom change after customer wrath. According to customer outrage, Adobe Systems has decided to undo a significant change it made less than two weeks ago to its widely used Lightroom software for cataloging, cataloging and editing photos. Adobe had overhauled Lightroom's mechanism for importing photos. The company was trying to simplify a process that its research showed to be dauntingly complex for people new to the program. Uh, last week, Adobe apologised for making a change without consulting its users the way it had when Lightroom was in earlier development stages. And on Friday, it announced a plan to switch back to the old photo import process, uh, reported CNET. So at least somebody's listening to us. Yeah, apparently. Don't try and make it simpler for us either. <laughs> That's just, or maybe just Adobe simple is not human simple mm. or something. <laughs> could be, could be, but um, I think sometimes any change is bad, you know. So, yes, that that's I, always a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't, don't know anything about this particular one. No, um, could go either way on that. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he, he, here's one that I've personally had experience with. So um, nine to five Mac is reporting. I become IBM cut down ISO. Sorry, I'll study. IBM cuts down IT support costs with its Mac deployment. And it says 5% of Mac users call a help deck desk versus 40% for PC users. I know, you got yourself in the wrong game, didn't you? <laughs> you should have been helping out people with PCs, not Macs. Yes. <laughs> um, that, That's an incredible stat, isn't it? It is. Absolutely it's enormous. Absolutely amazing stat, that one. And it's even to the point where... Um, IBM originally planned to deploy around 50,000 new Macs to the company by the end of this year when it first announced the initiative back in May. But at a recent JMF conference, it said it's currently deploying around 1,900 Macs per week with 130,000 Apple devices already in use at the company. So 1,900 it's per week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know that's you know not not a very insightful comment, but that is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you now way back when I used to look after a particular school, and I'm talking fifteen years ago. Oh, well, yeah, about fifteen years ago, or a bit bit longer. Um, when we had four hundred and fifty pieces of Mac equipment, mm. the most I was there was half a day every day that's the maximum i ever got to was half a day every day and really the when they were looking after 450 pieces of ibm equipment they had one and a half full-time staff that just gives you an example of 
the difference oh. and that was 15 years ago <laughs> see that is it isn't yeah so the numbers that ibm are quoting now are when what was it five percent compared to forty percent yeah so that, that you know that's an eight to one ratio so but even for you you're saying there's at least a, a one to three ratio in the yeah. support costs yeah that's um that's, i mean it support costs it's not small money you know that's, <laughs> that's not an insignificant thing that's um yeah it's extraordinary yeah. And the ad actually, uh, sorry, the story started off about talking about it, getting rid of staff, but it, it actually doesn't go on to say they got rid of any staff. They're just saying that they've cut their, their expenses because they're deploying so many machines. Mm. Um, so it'd be interesting yeah. when they got their Macs and their iPads and their iPhones going all together, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think um, any, any attrition won't be won't be replaced for a while I imagine. <laughs> well that, that was know. another comment in this story was that um another saving for them was that they get um sorry is being uh, that they expecting more years out of their max um whereas they're only sort of really expecting two to three from their windows based machines they're actually mm -hmm. expecting five from their Mac based machines for the same job. Yep. So it's um yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And then uh, Stat I'll, I'll I'll make sure I mention to our IT people at work. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it'll have any uh any effect though. On, uh, yeah. Just say I'm here to save you money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Sorry, it's a Windows environment, that's that. That's right. Deal with it. <laughs> that's because 40 you know eight to one more yeah. work that's right that, that that's what i've always found uh for all those years is that once you have an it boss his job is to keep himself employed and mm -hmm. eight eight to one more work so yeah so another couple of little mentions for this week is um for people that do have windows machines especially those running uh windows 7 or windows 8 um it might update to Windows 10 automatically if you're actually don't, not paying attention. Um, on one of the, you know, those tick boxes, you say, well, it's due for another, we've just released another update, and you press OK and you walk away. Um, when you come back, it might have Windows 10 installed. Um, and it's because they've admitted they... Um, Windows admitted they shouldn't have done it, but it's just one of those things where they've made a made a mistake and ticked ticked a, or pre-ticked the box, um, and it will install. Because a couple of weeks ago we we're talking about it was downloading uh, the update software, whether you actually chose to install it or not. Not only downloading, it's also bloody uploading it too. It's also using it as a oh, server. Oh, yeah, that's right. Using <laughs> using you as the server. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's I said, um, yeah. just make sure you're paying attention and don't click any buttons without thinking about it first, because you might come back after coffee and have a different operating system. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So unless you want that to happen, yeah. Yeah. Be just be aware. Um, yeah. um, another good thing is. ICloud, oh, sorry, I work for iCloud came out of beta during the week. So in conjunction with Thursday's iWork update uh, for iOS and Mac, Apple has removed the beta tag previous, previously adorning the icons on pages, numbers and keynote in iCloud. And they yeah. added a number of new features. Um, I noticed I, it worked yeah. a little bit better today when, we, when I tried to jump into the show notes there. There we go. <laughs> Not a, not a lot better, to be honest, but it worked a bit better. Yeah, so in addition to the aforementioned mobile preview capabilities, I work for iCloud all comes with a commenting interface, document change tracking, version history, word count for pages, uh, 10, a different, t 10 additional languages, and uh, on the web, users can work with Pages 08 and Pages 06 documents or Numbers 08 spreadsheets. And, and also... Um, when you're on the web, you can preview documents in mobile, Safari, and Android. So, so they've opened it up a fair bit. Yeah. 
Sounds like it. I um yeah. You know, I got a bit of a surprise tonight. I, I jumped in and downloaded tonight's show notes yeah. just a minute ago. Um and downloaded as a word file, so it came down as a, a docx file. Yeah. And um I opened up in text edit. Uh huh. Instead of never never realized that uh text edit on the Mac or I don't know if this is a new thing or but um yeah, opened up a docx file. A couple of years. Okay, well, there yep. you go. I haven't tried that because <laughs> I assumed it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, at least, on that one. at least a couple of years, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And we've there got... Go. Um, I'd just like to make one comment about the uh, pages update I got on Thursday. Uh, mm-hmm. I've had a couple of major lockups when I'm using pages... Uh, app which has forced me to actually restart my Mac. Okay. So I'm a pretty Apple only guy, mm. and because that's the thing I get asked most of the questions about, so I try and keep to the standard software as much as I can. Yes. And yep. um, so yes, yeah, so I'm just a bit a bit frustrated lately. I've had I've had three I think where I've actually had to force forcibly shut the machine down. And is that an update to the actual pages? I haven't even seen any updates for pages come down. Yeah, last Thursday. Um, maybe only on El Capitan. I'm not sure. Yeah, but this it was... is running El Capitan. I didn't... Yeah, didn't... Last, last Thursday. Yes. Maybe you've just okay. got auto-update on and it's just happened for you. It might have done. I'll ch- go back and check because, that, yeah, that's a bit of a surprise there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Super, super quick one. I'm yeah. not sure if we had this one in there, but it um, looks like iPhone 6S and 6S Plus have sold out in South Korea, despite <laughs> it being, you know, it's just just dropped there last little while, last day or two. Yeah. And um, despite Samsung having copied them with a, a pink gold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not even subtle copying, is it? You know, oh, we might add this new color to our color range. Yeah. Pink gold. Yeah, okay. Where do we get this idea? <laughs> But uh, still, in all, the the, um, the phones that are sold out is the Success and Success Plus. That's one quick one. But there's and one thing Samsung hasn't copied, have they? The selling the out selling part. Out. <laughs> Even in Korea. <laughs> oh, that's a bit sad. Yeah, good one. <laughs> um, Tim Cook taking stage last night U.S. time at uh, Wall Street Journal Digital Life Conference. Yeah announces Apple TV on sale next week or pr- available for, pr- for pre-order next week. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. Um, 6.2 million paying customers for Apple Music, which is a bit behind Spotify, but not too bad to, to get going with. Not bad for f- four months. Yeah, first month <laughs> after, first month that people have actually got to pay for it. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty good. And... Um, no comment on the sales of watches other than we're really happy with it. We sold more <laughs> in the second quarter than we did in the first quarter of having them available and we expect to sell more again. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. But because so, that means it's not just the nerds like us that bought them straight up. That's right. Mainstream. Yep. And they're also yep. talking about um, like stores like Target in America having them for the, the Christmas period. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that lots it, and lots of people get in to see them. Yeah, it seems to be at the moment, just about every second day you see somewhere else that they're available in the US, isn't it? Yeah. Um, BH, the photo. Yeah, B&H, photo yeah. People and, yeah, B&H. That's a big um, Apple store, yeah, but... They're, they're coming more and more widely available. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Apple stuff. Yeah. Besides everything else, like there are originally a camera store, but... <laughs> Yep. Okay. Um, another one that was mentioned this week was Australians are using less and less cash that withdrawals from ATMs. So we're obviously uh, more more happier with doing the swipe when we're doing payments and using our our card that way. And so it's gone from something like seventy five million down to 54 million over four years uh, cash withdrawals from ATMs so uh, and they were saying about soon we'll be able to use our watch 
Now, they've been saying soon for a while now, but soon really? we'll be able to use our watch. You can already use the Android one, um, use Google's wallet, but... Yes, because it's yeah. got the the older RF type thing in there, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say, I mean, I, me, I, personally, I can't, I, so often, you know, I'll need some actual cash for something. Uh, not that often is the thing. I never have cash on me anymore. I yeah. never get cash out. Yeah. Remember, you'd, at least when you're going to the grocery shop, you'd get 20 bucks on top of it or whatever. I don't even bother doing that anymore. I just swipe the card and move on, you, you know. So, Everywhere it's pay wave. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So does that mean like things like um, the government announced today they're cracking down on the banking industry for exorbitant credit card fees, etc.? Does that mean they're going to... Um, get into them about uh, like the two dollar fifty fee when I go and withdraw twenty dollars from an APM when it's not <laughs> not my banks like some are, some are a dollar twenty yeah, some are two fifty high, yeah some when it's two fifty you think oh should I take fifty out instead of twenty and <laughs> to make it worth two dollars fifty that's yeah that's extortionary yeah if you're only going to get twenty dollars out and know, it's more than ten percent yeah. Twelve percent, or whatever. Yeah. For um, for the pleasure of getting it out. I, yeah. No. Pleasure of using <laughs> their piece of equipment. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, just I just wouldn't get the money out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Make do without it. I don't know. It's so little. It's so often that I am caught without cash for. And it's These usually days, the kids yeah. will need it. And that's that's you know that's the biggest thing. It's like kids will want some actual cash to because <laughs> they have to take five dollars to school for something or whatever. I'm like, look, mate, I just don't have any cash. <laughs> Damn. There's money in the account. There's just no cash in the in the hand. Yeah. We have to get him his own card. Oh no. Don't do that. <laughs> one one of the um, schools I work at, they're they're fairly tech savvy and they've made the their school quote library card, for example. Hmm. That's a school credit card now, so only within the school. Okay. So you can go and buy your lunch, buy a drink, buy your morning tea. Wow. Um, pay for your photocopying because you've got to pay for photocopying yes. and printing. Um, all of that sort of stuff on your library card. And mum and dad get to pay for it at the end yeah. of the <laughs> So, yeah. So that's one way of doing it. And it, yeah, it can only be used at the school. So it's not like it's going to get someone can pinch it and go and use it somewhere else. Hmm. Pretty easily traceable hmm. who's spending the money and where they're spending it. So, yeah, I bet you there's a uh, a brisk industry in pinching it out of people's back pocket. Too. <laughs> yeah, but it's got the photo on it too. So, so. ah, there you go. <laughs> just just to alleviate that challenge. <laughs> there you go. Okay, all right. So yeah. my my brain wasn't quite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for how. <laughs> you're you're looking at our library card, not the one they have these yep. days. <laughs> these days, yeah. So yeah, that's all. That's all I've got. That's all I've got too. All right, that's excellent. So we'll put a little picture up for the end of my video, which has got uh, our friends at ATH Web Hosting um, just reminding us of all their advantages. So I'd like to say thank you again, my friend, and to you, and to listeners, and thanks yes. for the feedback, guys. Any any other feedback you like? Yeah. Um, please please send us. Send, send us a message. That's excellent because that's more than one a week now, so we must be reaching somebody. <laughs> yeah, some of you must be listening, eh? <laughs> I'm yeah. still eagerly awaiting the arrival of the watch bands. We had a listener ask about how the watch bands I mentioned a couple of weeks ago were, and yeah. once they uh, once they arrive, I'll um, I'll have a chat about those. It's a, sh it's a shame they're taking so long to get here, isn't it? Yeah, well, as I expected, they're on a they're literally on a slow boat from China. <laughs> But yes, we are all, we're all holding our breath waiting for that report, my friend. <laughs> for the price, go on, you can't go wrong. No. So, that's it. Thank you, everybody, and we'll talk to you again next week. Good night.